Hey there, welcome to Feast and Farm Cooks, where today we are making a Dutch oven pot roast. This is by far one of the easiest recipes to make. Takes a little bit of time, probably not something you're gonna make on a weeknight, but certainly for a weekend, it is absolutely delicious. Fork tender, so juicy, and we just love it at our house. So let's get started. Let me show you what you're gonna need to put this together. Very simple. Up here in the front, we've got about a two and a half pound chuck roast. I haven't trimmed it, I've just kind of patted it dry. I've got half of a yellow onion here. You can use a red or a yellow, just kind of thinly sliced. A couple tablespoons of vegetable oil, salt, pepper, and four cups of beef broth. Now, you can make your own, of course, if you do that. If you don't use beef broth, you can use chicken stock. You can check up right here to see my homemade chicken stock recipe, or you can get one from the store if that's what you prefer. Back here is an enameled cast iron this is actually a braising pan and not officially a Dutch oven, but I have one of those too. I just thought it would be easier for you to be able to see what I'm doing if I use something that was a little more shallow. So that's what we're doing today. But I had this heating up and we are going to add a little bit of oil. Put that in and I'm gonna let that start to heat. And let me move my camera so that you can see what's gonna happen in the pan. Be back in just a second. We're gonna start out by seasoning our pork or chuck roast with a little bit of salt and pepper. Don't be afraid because beef can really handle the seasoning. So I'm gonna put probably a half a teaspoon on one side here and I am going to pepper that thoroughly. Then we're gonna get this in the skillet as long as it's getting warm enough. Why do I keep calling it a skillet? Into the, the pan, the pot, whatever. <laughs> What's wrong with me today? Okay. So we're gonna put it in season side down. We wanna sear the meat for a couple of minutes before we put it in the oven. And it should sizzle. It's sizzling a little. Mine probably could have been a little bit hotter. But we're gonna leave this in here for about five minutes and we're gonna let that really get some crispiness and some color on one side because color is flavor and that's what you want. I'll go ahead while it's here and just sprinkle on a little bit of salt on the other side, just because I can. If you're gonna use a really salty beef broth or if you're using a bouillon, be very, very careful with your seasonings because it can really overpower. You can just end up with something so salty. So be very careful with that. I'm gonna sear this on both sides, about five minutes on each side, and I'll be back to show you what it looks like in just a second. So we've been searing a couple of minutes. Now I'm gonna flip it over. Sometimes these hot plates just don't get as hot as your regular stove does. So just use your best judgment on heating your oil, put your hand over the pan, feel when it's hot or it just starts to shimmer before you put your meat in and just trust your own judgment. I've had people accuse me of trying to burn their house down, but I promise I don't want you to do that. All right, so we're gonna flip it over and you can see it's got some color. It's getting a little bit of golden brown on it and that's exactly what we want. We're gonna give it another couple of minutes here and I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions in and they're just gonna kind of lay around the meat Get a little bit of color on those while the meat's searing on the other side. And then I'll show you the next step. So we've been on this side for a couple of minutes and now we're gonna add our beef broth. The goal here is to get your broth about halfway up the side of your meat. So if you're using a, a larger pan or a smaller pan, you may not have to have quite as much broth, but I'm gonna use about four cups here and that's typically about the right amount for mine. So we're gonna pour that in until it's just up at the edges near the, you know, a little, little more than halfway maybe up the side of your meat, but not covering it and not floating in there. So we're gonna cover this and we're going to put it in the oven now, totally covered, 375 for an hour and a half. Then we're gonna take the lid off. We're gonna check the, the liquid level inside. And if yours is cooked down more than halfway, add a little water to kind of bring it back to that original level. Then back into the oven at 350. So you'll, after that hour and a half, turn the oven down to 350, go another hour covered, then bring it out, and we're gonna add carrots and potatoes, and I'll show you that step when we get there. Our roast has been in the oven for about two hours, and it's almost ready. I can almost put my fork in here and twist it and know that it's completely tender, but it's time for that last 45 minute push and to put in our carrots and potatoes, because we don't want those overcooked we want them perfectly tender, so we're gonna add those now. I just cube, like, what well, cube? I just cut mine into like, what? Strips or chunks of potato, and I do my carrots the same way so everything is near the same size. I've got about five carrots here, and you can do as many carrots and potatoes as you like and that will fit in your pan. So I've got three, about three potatoes and about five carrots, and they're all gonna go in here. And once they're nestled in and snuggled in, they'll go back into the oven with the lid on for, like I said, the additional 45 minutes. 
and we will be ready to eat. The roast with carrots and potatoes is finally out of the oven. It is absolutely fork tender. I didn't even bring a knife over here. I only brought two forks to show you how soft this gets. It's, I ladled it out, put some carrots and potatoes around there. We love to serve this with a horseradish sauce. So if you'd like that recipe, let me know in the comments and I'll drop it in for you down there. It's really, really simple. But a little bit of butter on the vegetables and you have just an absolutely amazing meal. I also love to serve this with my yeast rolls. So you can check out that recipe right here, how it and shreds apart. You can just use a fork and just pull this meat off. It is absolutely juicy and tender and delicious and one of our absolute favorites in this house. I know you're gonna love it. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet. Can't wait to see you again here soon. Have a great day.